Greetings, fellow scholars. Here we are on number four. We're halfway done with our Excel report. We made it over the hump. Just three more scenarios to go. And hopefully you've realized that for number six, I always try to keep it the simplest. So we're actually more than halfway done. Let's look at number four. For number four, we are going to observe and describe some distributions of data about texting and driving. We're going to look at three different age groups. We're going to find the mean, median, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. We've done that a lot in this class. This, this is a statistics-heavy math course, so uh, data distribution is extremely important. So we're going to keep looking at that over and over again. Hopefully it'll become second nature to you to look at the distribution of data and be able to tell if it's skewed left or right or if it has an outlier or if it's normally distributed. That's what we're, we're trying to get to that. We're going to create box and whisker plots for the three age groups and bell-shaped curves. And all of this is to practice creating charts to represent data distribution, in this case normal data distribution, and to practice talking about it. We're going to look at how the distribution could be deceiving if our axes are not labeled correctly. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to comment on the differences. And once we do label our axes the same, we're going to talk about how that changed things. And then we're going to pretend that we have an outlier. An outlier is an extremely large or an extremely small value that doesn't fit with the rest of the data, and we're going to see how that changes our data to be no longer normally distributed. So then we can't use all of our cool measurements like the mean, median, and the standard deviation. All of those measurements no longer apply when our data is not evenly distributed or normally distributed. We're going to explain how the standard deviation and coefficient of variation measure the spreads the spread of the data, is it tight data or is it loose data? You guys remember the army recruits had a tight set of data and the mall shoppers had a loose, um, you know, a wider range of data. So we're just gonna look and talk about all of that. Then you guys are going to follow this other link down here to look at some information about texting, I mean, I'm sorry, about fatal car crashes and then you're gonna relate that to the age groups of texting and driving. It's kind of neat to see how, how all that comes out. So let's go ahead and start uh, by going to this link right here. So you guys are going to either click that link or copy and paste it. I have already done that, but first let's look at our Excel report. Um, I've already gotten a head start here and we're gonna come back and I'll show you guys this as we move along. But please make sure your name is on there. This is actually number four, and I titled it, and then my, my label down here on this tab is texting and driving. All right, so let's go to this web page, and here I get this lovely graph, a lot easier to look at than some of the ones you looked at in uh, number two, I think it was, that were you know distorted somewhat, which, which was part of the exercise, getting information that's not so clearly laid out. That's, a, that's one of the huge important things about this class. But this particular graph is laid out super easy. It has all of the percentages. It looks like in 2007, 8.8% of drivers viewed for this study between the ages of 16 to 24 were using some sort of handheld device while they were driving. And then we see that it looks like our ages 16 to 24 are getting better and not doing this as much. We have apps now to prevent it. People are more aware of the dangers. Parents are making a bigger, bigger deal about it. So it looks like in 2016, cool, we've actually more than doubled, or I'm sorry, more than halved the number of 16 to 24 year olds we find texting and driving or using a handheld device. It doesn't have to be a cell phone, but we know usually that's, well, it does say handheld cell phones here. All right, so over here in this chart that I created on Excel, you can see I put my independent variable, my y-axis variable went first, and that was my year, and I did my dates. You guys can do that. And then I labeled my age groups, 16 to 24, 25 to 69, and then 70 plus. 
<clears throat> and then I just went ahead and put the values in. I held one finger on that graph while I actually had it the other way around. And then I just typed, you know, so I could easily see it. Actually, I used a pin to hold my place and type the values. So you guys can do that too. Now, once you guys get that done, you are going to select this data and insert a scatter plot with, I always call them tick marks. What, is, what do they call it? A scatter plot with markers. All right, and then of course, as always, you are going to label your axes and name your chart. Now you have this set of data here, and you guys are then going to take this information and we're actually going to create scatter plots. Well, let's just kind of do it here. For some reason, in the middle of making these videos, my touch screen stopped working. So I'm having a really hard time making things bigger and smaller, which is something I promised I was going to work on for these videos. It turns out to be harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> all right, so now I am going to select this, all this data, work smart, not hard. So I'm going to control Charlie, and then I actually didn't mean to have this in here. And then I'm just gonna control Victor. Paste that right in there. So you're, you know, your guys is, let me just clear all this out. This is all just here because I, I actually started this video and then I had to remake it, but that's okay. So here, I'm just gonna put this in here and control. Sorry, one more time. Copy and paste. All right, now that I have my data in the chart, I am going to calculate my mean, median, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation, not in that order. So my median, I'm going to press my equal sign, type in median, double click, select my list of data. My mean, same thing, equals, and you guys, you know, hopefully you know by now that when I created this chart, before I put all these values in, I selected all of that, and then I went up to my numbers and um, on my home right here, on numbers, I clicked percent. So before I typed that in, I did that. And then I also had already done that down here. When I copied the data, it automatically turned it into percent here. So then now I have my mean is my average. So I'm collecting my average. My standard deviation, we have STD EV right here. There are other standard deviations. When you guys look here, I have a standard deviation of a population, a sample. We're just using the STD EV. So make sure you get the right one. Select the data. And now I have my coefficient of variation is a ratio between my standard deviation and my mean. So I just calculate that. Um, my standard deviation is says 2%. I'm gonna go ahead and get another decimal value on that. I was afraid of that. So it was just rounding, you see. So we actually have an average difference between the years. That, you know, this is 2006 all the way to 2018. So we have an average difference of 1.5%. So an average difference of 1.5% of people of this age group using cell phones while they're driving. And then the coefficient of variation measures the exact same thing. What's the difference in the spread? Okay, so now we are going to select this data and insert a scatter plot. Our scatter plot is going to get some axes titles. Of course, always. And also, it's going to get a trend line. Our trend line here is just a linear trend line, so you don't have to do anything special. We don't need the equation or anything here. So we're just looking at the trend line. It looks like the data is pretty tight around the trend line, doesn't it? All right, so now I'm also going to select the same data, and I am going to insert a box and whiskers plot. So go to more scatter charts and then over to box and whisker. 
If you have Windows 13 or less, then you may have to go get on someone else's computer to create your box and whisker plot. Make sure that it also gets Axis titles and that everything is labeled. All right, very good. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is insert a bell-shaped curve. For our bell-shaped curve, I actually went on to my old Excel report and grabbed this little chart. You guys remember this chart? It just tells me my mean, and then my one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, four standard deviations on each the left and the right side of the mean. So now I need to calculate those standard deviations. I'm gonna to have to make this small now because I do have to get data from that chart over there. So right here for my mean, I am actually going to click this mean over here. Whoops, I need an equal sign to make that work. So put an equal sign here and then click my mean and now I have that. Now for my standard deviation, I am going to put my equal sign. I'm going to grab my mean and then my mean minus one standard deviation. And my standard deviation is right here. And then hit enter. All right, now I'm just going to copy that cell and I'm going to paste it. Well, it's actually what it's doing here is I can't do that because it's actually collecting the next, uh, the next one. So let's see what I can do here. What I can do is to keep that from happening, I can actually lock in my standard deviation. So let me show you guys what I'm doing here. Oh, my touch screen. I'm gonna to have to Google that when I finish these videos. So here, the standard deviation, when I copied and pasted this, it actually selected the next cell over. Instead of the standard deviation, it, it grabbed the next one. So what I have to do is lock in my standard deviation here. Or I could actually just do this. I'm just gonna copy this. Control Charlie, and then I'm just gonna paste it that way. And I can just do that. And I'm just gonna paste it into each cell because if you remember, the first one is the mean, the second one is the mean plus one standard deviation, and then I have the mean plus two standard deviations. So that's two times standard deviation. And then, and then this is just a little frustrating. It does all, it gives me all those decimals, but I'll fix that here in a minute. And then I have the mean plus three standard deviations. So that's times, uh-oh. And I have a minus here, it's supposed to be a plus. I better check that in my others as well. Okay, so then I have my mean plus four standard deviations. Now on the other side of my chart, I'm just gonna go ahead and select these right here and decrease the number of decimals, whoops, wrong way. Decrease the number of decimals that I have here. And then I am going to select, here I have uniform, Victor, whiskey. Your columns can be completely different. Yours will likely be completely different. All right, and then I'm gonna just move that over to make it more normal the way that we've had it. Now I am just going to, whoops, grab this data again. I have to copy it this very particular way or else it does weird things to my data. So I'm just going to paste this, well, now remember this one's gonna be minus. On the right hand side it's plus a standard deviation, on the left hand side it's minus a standard deviation. And I know I'm kind of going through this a little quickly, but we've already done this so many times. All right, and then this is two times the standard deviation. Uh, that's the mean minus two standard deviations. So I'm just copying this. I'm just trying to make it go quickly. 
All right, so now I have to change these that I pasted in here. This one was the mean minus three standard deviations. And this one was the mean minus four standard deviations. And again, it did all the stuff with my decimals, so I'm gonna select that, decrease the number of decimals up here. And then I'm going to select October Papa Quebec and scoot it over. You do have to scoot it over starting on the far right hand side. If you've tried it from the left, you'll find it, it just does weird stuff. So you do have to change your widths from the right hand side. All right, now I have found my standard deviations. So if I remember correctly, I start a chart up here where I am going to start with my lowest value. In this case, it's 0.5. 0.5%. Uh, now, you used percent over here, and I'm telling you this because I already did this and I had to come back and try to figure out why. We used percent for our mean and our standard deviation. So I'm about to use a formula that requires me to use that data, so I have to have everything in percentage. I can't have some stuff in percent and some stuff not in percent. So here I am going to type in 0.5%. So I'm going to actually change this cell, one click, change it to percent, and now I'm going to put in 0.5. All right, and it gave me 50. That's all right. Just do it again if it does that until it's the way you want it to be, 0.5%. And then it rounded it. So now I have to also have it increase the number of decimal values. So now in my next cell, I want, I guess I'm just going to drag that down and I'm gonna put 1%, but it does not know it's percent, so I have to change that again. All right, so now I have a half a percent and 1%, so now I can just select that data and drag it all the way down to what? Do you guys know? 12.5, right? All the way down to 12.5, because remember, we, we have to have from our starting on the left, all the way to where we end on the right. So 12 and a half, there we go. All right, now our next step is to, in this cell, we're gonna type equals normal distribution right here, and we need our X value. Our X value is, I can't make this smaller because I have to go grab data from the other side of the screen. So you guys, really should be taking notes, watching these videos, taking notes, and then coming back and doing the work. But I, I know that's not how it normally happens, and that's okay. So I'm gonna select my X value, which that's X, comma, my mean, which is all the way over here, my mean, comma, my standard deviation, comma, and then our cumulative for these, for this course, will always be false. We'll never do true in this course. All right, and then, I, when I drag this down, I want my X values to change, but I don't want my mean and my standard deviation to change. So I do have to put dollar signs around my mean and standard deviation letter part of the address. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign around each side of delta. You guys can look up here in my formula bar if you ever can't see what I'm typing uh, in, the, in the document, in the cells. I'm sorry, this is a spreadsheet, not a document you can look up here at the formula bar. All right, so dollar signs around each side of delta, and then for my, my um, standard deviation, I want a dollar sign on each side of echo. All right, and then I hit enter, select that cell, double click at the bottom right hand side, and you get a nice chart. Now I am going to select that entire chart and insert a smooth lined curve and voila I have my beautiful bell-shaped curve you guys are going to do this for each set of data you're actually going to I'm actually going to do some of it with you here so let's go ahead and continue I am going to do from here forward just the scatter plot with the trend line because I want to show you something but you guys are going to do the 
box plot and the bell-shaped curve for the other two sets of data. Talk about the difference between the distributions. All right, so for this one, I have already put this information in here, and I am going to create the scatter plot, and I'm also going to add my trend line. All right, now what do we see? It looks like the information for the next age group, and you guys, you guys will title these according to age group. This is age 16 to 24, so make sure that each of these are labeled ages 16 to 24, and you can even you know, label better than this. You guys are never limited to just what I do here. Make this bigger. And then of course, work smart, not hard. You can just copy that and put it right into the next labels for each one of these graphs. Whoa, I guess I, I didn't copy it. That's okay. Okay, so you guys are gonna label each one of those charts. Now this one, I guess I'll go ahead and get this again. And I am going to put the next one goes to ages, what was it, like 25 to 69, I think. Okay, so ages 25 to 69, it looks like my data is a little more spread apart than it was for my ages 16 to 25. Well, my standard deviation in ages 16 to 25 was 1.5. Um, what's my standard deviation over here? This, this one is not recorded in percent. So I'm gonna go ahead and E. I'm not sure what happened. But in my standard deviation, I'm gonna change this to percent. Give it some more decimals. All right, so let's look back up at this set of data. We have a standard deviation of 1.5, but what is happening on this axis? It goes from zero, two, four, six, right? So my standard deviation is 1.5, but visually it looks like I have tighter data than I have down here, where my standard deviation is actually less than one. So it should be the case that this data is more tightly wrapped around my trend line. Let me just see if I can move all this up here. All right, look, do you see how this axis is counting zero, one, two, three, four, five? So one, trend, one axis is counting by twos, the other by ones. We're gonna leave that for now, and we're gonna change it. We're gonna come back up and change that here in just a few minutes. First, we're gonna do this set of data. I'm gonna move this up too. And I had it spread apart because I had built you know, all of the charts here. So now I am going to, I've already got this in here. I'm gonna select, insert my scatter plot with my trend line. And holy camoly, look at that. It looks like the, let's get this in here. These were ages 70 plus. So you guys will label that. Ages 70 plus, it looks like their, their data is all over the place. It looks like they changed so much every year. But really, if we look up at our chart, we can see that that's not the case. Um, in, our, in our original graph, we can see that the 70 plus stayed pretty consistent along the bottom down here. They never even got above 2%. So their standard deviation should be extremely low and their data should be extremely tight about the trend line. Well, and then, you know, the ages 16 to 24 had a much wider range, a greater spread of how, what percentage of them. They started off all the way past 8% and came down, good thing, to four something. So let's look at our axis label on our 70 plus. What's it counting by? It's counting by 
two tenths. So it goes from 0.0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, 0 0.6. You guys are going to comment on how these different axes, labels, are causing this data to look like it's more spread out than it is. The standard deviation should be relative to the trend line on the data. So I'm just gonna go through here and change each one of these to count. You see where it says major right here? Well, this major is counting by 2%. That's 0 0.02, we move the decimal, and I just want it to count by one. Now, okay, so this is the problem. It's counting by 1%. So what does that need to be? 0 0.01. That's 1%. Okay? Now, let's go to the next axis and change this to, we're going to put it exactly the same. Here we had a maximum. And then our major was, what was it? Let's just look again. I'm gonna to try to make everything look exactly the same. So I had a min minimum of zero, maximum of 0.1, major 0 0.01, minor 0 0.002. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So this was 0.1. This is just, yes, 0 0.01. Okay, so now everything's the same. Very good. And you can now see how the data is, you know, getting to look more like it was in the chart. We have everything the same here, starting at zero, going to 10%. Very good. All right. And now for this one, we want this to also be the same. So our maximum and our major is 0.01. All right, now our graphs actually look like they're supposed to. So always make sure that the axis, axes are labeled correctly on your graphs. Uh, let's go back to our sheet. When you guys get finished with this whole project, it is going to look like this. You're going to have all of your graphs on here. You're going to, whoa, sorry. You're going to discuss the difference in the widths of these box and whisker plots, but you're also going to make sure that your y-axis on your box and whisker plot is equal for each one of these as well. And you're going to discuss the different widths, and you're going to relate the data distribution, the standard deviation, to how tightly the dots are about the trend line. And then we're going to do something cool. The cool thing we're going to do here is experiment with outliers. Well, what is an outlier? An outlier is an extreme value. There's a mathematical way to calculate an outlier. Once your data set has an outlier, you can no longer use these measurements for normal distribution. You have to use all kinds of, there are all kinds of cool tests that you can use for data that's skewed. And we are going to um, not talk about that, those tests where we would use SPSS. I actually use that a lot in my research. Um, but for quantitative literacy, we'll, we can just talk about this. So for an outlier, instead of calculating a mathematical outlier, which isn't hard, I'm just going to throw one in there. So I'm just going to throw it here at the end so we can find it easily when we're done. 4.2%. Well, what if one year we found that ages 16 to 24, that 80% of the drivers were using a handheld cell phone? Look at our data. It's skewed so far that it can't even make a shape of a curve. The box and whisker plot doesn't make any sense. Using the my trend line is a ridiculous mess. So you can see that once we throw an outlier in, our data is now skewed. My outlier is extremely big. Look at my mean and my median. Well, what happened to the median? Let's go back and look. The median and the mean. Look at the difference between them. When the data was normally distributed, they were very, very close in value. Once I throw an outlier in there, now there's a huge difference. The data is skewed. 
the data has been skewed uh, left or right because the, the value is so much larger on my curve. I don't know if you guys are seeing me backwards or forward. It's dragging the data out like it did on the budget with the money, America's money. We're gonna look at that again too here today. So a very large outlier will skew my data right. What if I had a very small outlier? What if I had 0 .008? Hardly anybody was using a cell phone. Um, it didn't really skew my data too terribly. It, it doesn't look really, really bad, but let's just throw in another zero there. Still not getting too bad. And we do have a mathematical definition of an outlier. So this, this is, you can see that this data got skewed on my chart down here. I have that one dot at the bottom. If you look at my box and whisker plot, it did put one dot down there at the bottom. Um, but this still just is not enough of an outlier to make my data look crazy and also because it's small. So we're gonna just throw in the large outlier to really show how it's going to look. The smaller outlier is not changing the data in a enough to talk about. All right, guys, so you have now seen what this scenario is going to look like when you're all finished with it. You have discussed all of the things that your five sentence report requires, changing the different axes, pretending we have an outlier, and then explaining standard deviation and the coefficient of variation are measurements of how spread out the data is. Then you guys are just responsible to go on and look and see the fatal car crashes for between age groups. And you know, really, we've already done that. If you go back to our drinking and driving stats here, you can see that for our age groups, the probability of dying in a car accident from ages zero to four is very low, while the probability of dying in a car accident if you're 70 or over is very high. So we just saw that our 70 or over are not really using handheld devices, but they're the ones having the most trouble with dying on the road. And of course, there are many reasons why that could be. All right, folks, I think we have covered scenario number four. So um, I will see you now in scenario number five. Keep being amazing.